I hope this video helps. Please check out the playlist, Evidence for Christianity, Evidence for the Bible, End Times, and the Book of Revelation. I'll leave links in the description for all four. Enjoy. So I recently had this company reach out to me to do a product review on this wireless thermometer that you can put in your freezer. You might be asking yourself, well, what would be the purpose of that? Well, what if you're at work and your freezer quits working? You don't want to come home to a big slushy mess all over on the floor or stinky mess in the in the kitchen. Also, I recently had a guy that I work with, he went out of town and uh, while he was out of town, somebody decided to call his electric company and have his electricity shut off. And guess what? When he got home, he had a stinky mess in the kitchen. So that's what this would prevent. If, uh, if you had it set up in your freezer, refrigerator, you'd be able to get some continuous monitoring and alerts for if you have any issues with your refrigerator or freezer. I'll leave an Amazon link in the description for this product. I am an Amazon associate, so I do earn from any qualifying purchases when using my link. Let's set it up. So first thing I'm going to do is get the app set up on the phone. I got an Android operating system. Alright, we got the app. So let's go ahead and uh, get the device set up and then we'll go ahead and move forward with the setup of the app. Alright, so they sent me uh, two wireless sensors. There's a display, charger, or power for the display, or charger. And, and then they sent me an extra wireless sensor. So these things have to be charged up before you use them. This thing gets power from that. Comes with Velcro double-sided so that you can stick this to that and then there's your sensor goes into this deal so we need to charge that up now I got my two sensors charging here and as you can see there is a little red light letting you know that it is and let's go ahead and set up the app while we're waiting I got the display here and it's set up with the power cable and the mounting bracket uh, and it connects to the mounting bracket magnetically so you could take it off and connect it to slap it on whatever you want as long as it's a magnetic surface and let's go ahead and plug in our display cool looks nice so now it's telling us to download the smart app and uh, then it gives us the information about the device so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and get started you can create a profile, which I'm going to do. Hit login. Since I don't have one, I'm going to create a new account. Alright, so I got it set up and it sent me an email. Now I'm going to enter the code. Alright, we successfully registered. Now we're going to log in. So we're logged in now. I'm going to change my profile name, my nickname. All right, now we're at Justin's house. Got the profile nickname set up. All right, now we got our account set up. Let's go to home. Let's hit the plus sign up at the top right. Add device. So this is a hub that I have. It's the H5 Lite. So now we can click on the hub for the Wi-Fi hub H5 Lite. So it's currently in setup mode because that's where we left off. We need to allow it to whatever. So now it's scanning. Oh yeah, there it goes. That's the one. So now we get to set up a Wi-Fi. So select your Wi-Fi. And next. On the device itself, it's actually showing it setting up the Wi-Fi now. And it's done. The kitchen. Alright, add room. Yay, there we go. Their hub is set up in the kitchen. Hit next. That's it right there. Alright, it is connected. So while I was connecting it, this was going through all kinds of fun stuff. And it was blinking this light. And it was setting up everything here through the Wi-Fi. It set itself all up. To this so it has a correct time the correct day and that is great 
It even shows the weather, wow. So let's get our sensors uh, all put in the fridge, in the freezer, and then connect those. So my plan is to mount the communication hubs on top of the refrigerator and freezer instead of on the sides or in the front because I know the wife wouldn't like looking at them. And so in the process I had to clean the top of the fridge off. And you may come across a rubber chicken that you've been hiding from your kids. So I have the double door fridge and I plan on putting it right down the middle for each of them. Just running it right down here, right down here. So I got the freezer on this side. Plan on putting it back there for the freezer. And then right back there for the refrigerator. If you want to support my channel, leave a super links below. Or you can join Robinhood through a link that I'll leave in the description. And we'll both get a free stock. Or you can purchase this product through a link that I'll leave in the description. And I'll get a little commission. Continue watching. My alarm and communication hub units are fully charged there's no longer a red light so we can go ahead and start using these so here's all my mounting accessories I got the velcro for the uh, communication modules and also this for the communication modules when I'm going to set it up to the app and then I got the double sticky tape for the sensor so I can mount that and then we got these suction cups for the temperature probe that go into this hole here that hold on to it while you mount it in the fridge so I got the suction cup holding the probe right there all right, so the suction cup doesn't really hold on the freezer wall or the fridge wall, so we're going to have to uh, use the double-sided tape. Make sure you wipe down the ceiling surface of the refrigerator and the freezer with a wet rag and then dry it off real good before you go sticking anything on. All right, got my double-sided tape holding the sensor on right there. And then I got some more right there holding the sensor wire up. And then the flat side, make sure you... Make sure the flat side goes against the ceiling surface so it doesn't interrupt the uh, cooling and you got a leak. And then I got my sensor mounted right here with the Velcro. There we go. All right, so I've got my two communication modules mounted up here along with the rubber chicken. And I got my refrigerator sensor mounted right there. And then the freezer sensor mounted right back there. So now we need to get the temperature sensors to communicate. And that's where this little guy comes into play. We want to go ahead and add another device. So click on add device. And this is going to be the ST5 temperature sensor. Now it tells you to poke that hole. So on your communication module, open up this rubber flap. And then you'll see in the back there a little hole. There's a hole. I'm going to stick this pin in that hole. and hold down the button for one second. One. And then, you'll see that blue light blinking right there. And now it's time to connect. So now you just check mark that box, that little hole down there, you gotta click on it, and then you can hit next. Now it's looking. And there it goes, it's adding a device. This is going to be the one for my refrigerator. Yeah, we're going to put it in the kitchen. All right, it's finally connected. So it's 42.8 degrees in my fridge. Might be a little warm right now because I've been opening and closing it. So hopefully that will cool down a little more. So as my refrigerator is cooling down, I got my freezer connected. And then I'll show you here how to change the name of it. You got that and then you go to your settings and then you can just click on more device information and then right there on the name change that confirm and we can go back and it will show freezer now we can go ahead and set up our temperature parameters that we want it to alarm us at so since we've had everything open and the temperatures aren't quite regulated yet I want to go ahead and let it sit for about two or three hours to get everything regulated. Then we'll set our temperature parameters so that we don't set off any erroneous alarms. In the meantime, let's go ahead and play with this thing. So we got our sensors and the way we select what we want is we move this little knob here up and down. So we're on sensors and we want to select sensors. Hey, there we go. There's our fridge. There's our freezer. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens when we select it. No historical data yet. So we will get historical data over time. So we can go back by hitting this button. The oval button. And then go back. 
And then the weather, we can set up. There we go. So once we get up, get our home management set up for the location, we can do that. And the calendar. So if you want your display to show your weather, you got to set the current location. So in this menu, go to my home, home management settings, and then home, and then my home, or whatever you named it to. And then now under region, you can click on that. And then if you denied permission for it to see your location, you can go to settings, and then allow, ah, the stupid thing, shut that off. And then permissions, you can go under location and then allow only this. Well, now the location is set up right there to allow only while using the app. I'm going to use precise location. All right, go back. All right, we're back. Now we can go back again and then go to region. All right, so I'm gonna blur out my town, but it automatically selected it. So now we can hit, why didn't it just let me keep it? It's not letting me save. So go to current location. So, all right, so look for your state then look for your town. All right, now hit the check mark now that you've selected your state and town and then hit save. So now it is set, and now it should show you the weather when you go to your display. All right, so in the app, you can see in the top there that it does show your temperature and your chance for precipitation there in the top left. And as you can see, my fridge and my freezer are down to normal operating temperatures. Right there is a new home, right in front of the TV. We've been wanting something here that shows the time right in front of the TV. I love it. So I'm back at my display module and I want to see the weather. So it's currently selected on weather. You can move it around and, and select whatever option you want there. But there's the weather. I'm going to push in on the rotary switch there. All right, there's my weather. Sweet. So now I can just leave that up and uh, be able to see the time and weather. So now that our temperatures have regulated, I'm going to go ahead and set up my refrigerator temperature to trigger when it's above 41 degrees just so it doesn't trip every time the temperature goes above 40. So let's go to the temperature probe, go to settings, alarm settings, temperature alarm, and right here we're going to set it to 41. There we go. I'm going to switch that on. Okay, so that gives you a buffer of, let's say it drops down into, or it goes up into the temperature that you want it to alarm at. And then it gives it a so many minute buffer. So now at this point, you can now allow your hub to beep, or you can allow it not to. Let's go ahead and set it up to beep. You go ahead and check mark. All right, the hub will beep now if your refrigerator is at 40 degrees for more than five minutes and it will set off an alarm. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and do that with the freezer. Just for fun, we're going to go ahead and shut off the anti-false alarm setting. So we're going to shut that off, go back. Uh, oh, sorry. Save it. Go back. And then we're going to go ahead and open the fridge and see what kind of alarms we got. Alright, fridge is open. Let's see what happens. So that's what our hub is doing now that the alarm is going off for the refrigerator being open. It sent me an email saying that uh, there's a temperature alert and it also sent me a uh, notification from the app saying there's a temperature above 39.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So fantastic, it works. Even though I shut the hub alarm off, it does flash the red light here at the hub. So it doesn't beep, but the hub light does blink. 
So I'm setting up my outside temperature probe and you can actually change the name of the probe right here. So I'm going to make this one outside. Now I can remotely monitor the temperature outside just for the heck of it. I got it somewhere that's out of direct sunlight but somewhat where it gets some fresh air. If you ever want to check the history of your alarms just go up to that text message looking three dot thing. And then there you go, there's your message notification history. And you can click on your device logs. And there you can see when it's triggered. And then you can also delete it, it looks like. Hey, it's all gone, yay! So I think I found the sweet spot for my sensor alarm settings and also my temperature in the refrigerator. So I didn't realize how wild the temperature swings were inside the refrigerator, but now I do, and I had to uh, turn down the temperature on the refrigerator. My alarm settings here, I set it to 41, because uh, you're not supposed to really let your food get over 40 degrees. And then I set the anti-false alarm to 20 minutes. And then for the freezer, that one, I set the alarm to 33 degrees Fahrenheit, with a 15 minute anti-false alarm. That seems to be working pretty good at this moment, so you can uh, fiddle with it however you want. So I absolutely love this display. It fits in with the living room and it magnetically attaches to the TV stand. So let's say your probe got disconnected. What does it do? So there you can see the notification for the freezer device probe disconnected from the device body. And then the notification that the freezer device probe is connected back to the device body. So it sends you a notification when uh, when you lose a probe. Now I move my outside sensor out of range so that I can see what happens if it loses communication with one of the modules like the outside one. You'll get a notification for that too from the app and by email. So now I'm going to simulate what happens if you lose power. I'm just going to unplug the hub basically. Power's off. I'm now getting a notification and an email saying it's offline. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And if you want to connect with me, I have a public group on MeWe called Share Your Trade and also on Instagram. I'll leave links in the description for both of those. Thanks for watching.